Welcome to a2zknowledge.com and to my channel Data Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about uh, Spark with Zeppelin integration. So what is Apache Zeppelin and uh, why we need this integration and how to do that. So we are, we are going to discuss all these things in this video. So Apache Zeppelin is a web-based notebook. Instead of uh, executing all your queries in the black terminal, you can go ahead with a web-based notebook uh, and you can get output in tabular, tabular view and then pie chart, graph chart because Zeppelin is a visualization unit. And and if you are very familiar with uh, Jupyter Lab notebook, which is in Python world, so then Zeppelin is similar to that. Okay, so uh, let, let's get into the uh, practical stuff. <clears throat> so the version of uh, Zeppelin, what I'm using is Zeppelin 0 0.9 and uh, Yes, and uh, the Spark version which I'm going to use here is uh, uh, Spark 2.4. So, Zeppelin is uh, not only for Spark, you can use Zeppelin, you can integrate MySQL, Oracle, Hive, Hadoop, and uh, NoSQL databases like Cassandra, and even file systems and many other technologies you can connect with uh, this uh, Zeppelin, not only uh, uh, Spark. So to for in for Zeppelin the prerequisite is you need JDK. So JDK latest version is required for the version 0.9 of Zeppelin. So I'm using JDK 9.0.4. So you have to download this JDK and you have to set the path in the bash rc file. So let me show you that. <coughs> So you have to come, you have to open the bash rc file and come to end of file. You have to set here your Java home and then you have to set this Java home in the path variable. So this is done. Save your file. Now execute your bash rc dot space dot bash rc. Once you execute this, so the Java installation is completed. Now you have to do few changes in the Zeppelin fold means the Zeppelin uh, folder like uh, the installation steps. Just open a con folder inside Zeppelin, you can find these two files, Zeppelin env.sh and Zeppelin site.xml. So it will be, uh, the file name will be end with dot template. So you have to rename it so that you will remove dot template from the file name. Now just open these two files. So uh, in the Zeppelin env.sh, you have to uh, give your Java home. So similar to what we did in bash rc, you have to set your Java home in an env file. Just save this file. Okay, so Zeppelin-site.xml, we just need to change the port number in which the Zeppelin server is going to run. So here it will be 8080 by default, but 8080 port number will be used by so many other applications by default. So even Spark is using 8080. So change this to some other number like 8085, so like how I did here. Just save this. Now I'm going to integrate this with Spark. So you have to start your Spark server. So bin slash start if and all dot sh. Use this command to start your Spark. And to start Zeppelin, you have to use this command bin slash Zeppelin if and daemon dot sh start. So this will start your server. My Zeppelin is already running. Let me give JPS. You can see Zeppelin server master worker, which is Spark. Now go to your browser and you have to log on with localhost colon 8085. Okay. So this will be your Zeppelin homepage. So two things we have to learn first. So first you just see in your right hand side anonymous interpreter. What is interpreter in Zeppelin? The technology whatever that you are going to connect with Zeppelin, right? That is interpreter. For example, if I connect Spark with Zeppelin, then Spark is an interpreter. Hive, Hive is an interpreter. I am going to connect Zeppelin with Cassandra, then Cassandra is an interpreter. I am going to connect Zeppelin with Python, then Python is an interpreter. So you can see like almost so many uh, interpreters are pre-configured. So let me search for Spark. <coughs> You can see here Spark is already pre-configured and they have added, added all the information of Spark which is required to connect with the cluster. So if I, okay, I need Cassandra. Search for it. Cassandra, so Cassandra is here. So for example, I want Hive, then I'm searching for Hive now. So, but if you see it was not configured yet, so I, I don't see any interpreter here. In that case, you can go ahead with create interpreter. So I have already uploaded a video for Zeppelin with MySQL in which I have explained how to create an interpreter for MySQL. So that video link I have shared in the description box, which you can uh, uh, take that as a reference to how to create a new interpreter for Hive.
okay so the next thing we need to learn is notebook so first you have to create a notebook notebook is where like you can type all your programs codes and all those stuff so this uh, Zeppelin especially developers will use it for some kind of a testing with respect to the data so I just create a note I will give demo underscore spark and here you can choose any interpreter it doesn't mean like uh, i choose spark so in the note i can only uh, run spark programs it's not like that even uh, by creating this notebook you can even run cassandra programs i'm sorry cassandra queries as well so just create this so this is a new notebook got created and what uh, program i'm going to execute here i'm going to run a spark sql program so i'll show you the code so here is my code. So this is a file datagen underscore 10.txt which has 10 records and it's a drug data. I'm giving structure for this, the column names and the file is comma separated. So split by comma and I'm assigning the uh, column names to the data and I'm creating a uh, temporary table in Spark named as patient. So this is a Spark SQL exercise. So after creating the table, I can able to uh, query this data set via querying this table patient. Okay. Now the question, okay, before this, I just wanted to show you one more thing. Select star from some table name. Okay, so there is some table, okay. So now if I want to run this query in Zeppelin, so how come Zeppelin uh, come to know whether this particular query belongs to MySQL or Hive or Cassandra? Because Zeppelin connects with Cassandra, Zeppelin connects with Hive, Zeppelin connects with MySQL. So how come uh, Zeppelin is differentiating the queries what I have given here is belongs to Hive or Cassandra or something like that? Or there is an, another example, println, it's there in both Scala and Scala. Python. So how come Zeppelin knows whether this particular uh, uh, println should run in Python or should run in Scala? So back to interpreter page. I will I will just go back to the interpreter page. So in this interpreter, the question what I asked you, right? So I'm giving you the answer now. Go to interpreter page, search for Spark. Okay, you can see something like this. Tag names percentage spark percentage sql that means so before you start your code or query whatever you have to mention which technology in which you want to run this code for example i'm giving cassandra okay so if you want to run this in cassandra let me show you the cassandra interpreter also okay you can see percentage cassandra that means Zeppelin will come to know okay i have to run this query in cassandra not in hive so like that now i'm going to run spark so i'm giving spark and then i'm going to paste my uh, code okay let me run this code so once this this is executed okay so this is this got executed now next you have to query this table okay so there is a next uh, paragraph here so select star from patient okay so you have to add spark dot sql okay so you have to give percentage spark dot sql so that zeppelin will know this like it has to run in spark sql just run this so you have the options like execute okay how we got the output we have options like execute uh, like uh, hide the editor close the output means hide the output so the output is in tabular view by default right so you have another chart views like uh, bar chart pie chart uh, area chart uh, scatter chart line chart so let me go with bar bar chart so this is just a select query right so we couldn't see any uh, bar charts here so let me run some aggregator queries some aggregations okay so here the column names are okay you can see this is the column name so i'm going to do d name that is drug name comma sum of amount from patient group by d name okay so this is a query uh, now you can like since it's an aggregation query you can able to see the charts very clear now let us wait for the code to execute. Okay, so uh, the tabular view I will show you first. So you can see uh, paracetamol total amount, metacin total amount and avil total amount. Now, uh, if you click bar chart by chart, sometimes you will be getting this no data available. So go to settings. So here we have the key field and value field and the column names are here. You have to drag this here. The column names of the column like what we used in the query so now just minimize the settings you can able to see the bar charts
now go to pie chart okay so you can see our will this much paracetamol and metacin so paracetamol is huge right and then area chart and line chart and scatter chart so uh, you can ask me a question like uh, only we have these four charts or we do have any other extra charts so we have some extra charts it's there in the Joplin as a source code you have to integrate that with your Joplin so if you go to Joplin website you can able to find out the steps how to do that okay so uh, that's all about the video in the next video I will show you how to do integrate Joplin with Cassandra or any other technologies in my upcoming videos and thanks for a2z.knowledge.com and my channel data engineering if you really like this video please do subscribe channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues and I have given my LinkedIn and Instagram URL in the description box and if you want to find the complete big data playlist link and that is I've, that I've shared in the description box for more videos you can refer that and I have one more channel called startup idea and I need your support to that channel as well just go to my channel and have a look so thanks for watching